Good morning everyone and welcome to the BB Dental channel. This is uh, Dr. Banzi Angelo. Today speaking about uh, the a review of the literature uh, about the guided surgery technique, the accuracy of, uh, of the surgery technique. Let's start. History of medicine has always been made by research, challenge and pledge. Medicine is part of a revolution that has changed our life. Uh, today, what we are living is a real digital dental revolution. In fact, working with files, we will be able to have the virtual imaging of the bone of the patient. Uh, we can uh, design a smile, a prosthetic smile using a software or taking a virtual impression by using an intraoral scanner. With uh, uh, surgical software, we will be able to plan in the position of the implant and uh, with extra oral scanner to uh, get the impression of a plaster model. Uh, CAD CAM system to design uh, the virtual imaging of a radiological template or a prosthesis and using milli machine, laser sintering machine or a 3D printer we will get uh, the final prosthetic rehabilitation. This is uh, what it is uh, living and working with uh, the digital uh, revolution. And, um, but what does it mean, digital dental revolution? It means, uh, as I told you before, that today we don't need any other material than file to get an entire prosthetic rehabilitation. Now, the question is, what it is a file? A file uh, it's a numeric data, uh, it's untouchable, it flies in the air and uh, you can collect it in a library, virtual library that we better know as uh, cloud. And uh, how can we work with uh, this untouchable number? Just follow three operative steps, acquisition, elaboration and production. The acquisition comes from uh, scanners. The most famous scanners uh, in the world is uh, the CT Convene. The CT Convene allowed us uh, to get the virtual imaging of the bone of the patient uh, and creating uh, DICOM files. Then we have uh, other scanners like intraoral scanners and extraoral scanners. Intraoral scanner and extraoral scanners allowed us uh, to have uh, the virtual imaging of soft tissues and teeth, creating STL file. Finally, the reflex. With the reflex, I'm going uh, to get the virtual imaging of the smile of the patient at the beginning, during and uh, post surgery and uh, uh, prosthetic rehabilitation, creating JPEG or RAW file. It's up to you which one you want to use. After the acquisition, it comes uh, uh, the elaboration. The elaboration uh, is uh, made thanks to uh, um, softwares. We can work with um, smile design softwares to, uh, that allowed us to have a sort of uh, a virtual workshop. That it's uh, very um, important for the patient uh, because it's uh, he's going to understand the final aesthetic uh, um, uh, rehabilitation um, of the case and for us to um, know the space required by, by the, from the prosthetic rehabilitation. Then uh, we have the surgical software. The surgical software allowed us uh, to perform a real, a virtual um, surgery. Uh, with the surgical software guided by a radiological template, I'm going to decide the implant position uh, and um, also I can uh, choose uh, the type of abutment I want to work with. Uh, for example, the angulation, uh, the parallelism of the abutment. Uh, it's not only uh, placing virtually an implant, but uh, it's uh, the entire system that uh, it's, uh, I'm allowed to work with this software. 
CAD-CAM system. The CAD-CAM system, uh, it's actually the technician that work with uh, this uh, uh, software. And uh, with the CAD, he is able to design uh, the virtual imagine of uh, the um, uh, surgical template. But he will be also um, capable to uh, virtually design the prosthetic uh, rehabilitation. Uh, after the elaboration, it comes uh, the production. The production uh, is um, uh, made thanks to uh, uh, machineries and uh, working with uh, different uh, type of uh, uh, machineries. I will be able to have uh, the surgical template and the stereolithographic model, for example, of uh, a maxilla, uh, just using a 3D uh, printer. And uh, with a uh, milli machine or laser sintering machine, I'm going to have the metal part I'm going to create. Uh, the technician is going to create the metal part of a removable prosthesis or uh, a single uh, crown working on different uh, materials or a bridge or uh, a circular. Uh, temporary, def uh, definitive um, uh, prosthesis, um, we can get all the uh, system. Uh, the radiological template. And with uh, the um, extra oral scanner or also the intraoral scanner, I can get uh, the virtual imaging of the soft tissues, teeth and radiological templates. Once that I've got these two files, the one of the bone of the patient wearing the radiological template and the one of the radiological template, I can match these two files together. Uh, once that the match has been done by the technician, it can be elaborated by a software, the surgical software. With the surgical software, the uh, doctor is going to uh, decide the precise implant position guided by the radiological template that is a copy. Uh, normally, it's a copy of uh, uh, the final uh, prost prosthesis. Uh, and uh, then, then when I decide the position of the implant, uh, the technician can, with the CAD-CAM uh, system, with the CAD in this case, uh, design the radiological template and the prosthesis. After the elaboration, uh, it comes the production. 3D uh, printer is going to print uh, uh, the surgical template and uh, uh, the plastic uh, model, uh, the copy of the maxillary of the patient. And uh, with uh, a milling machine, I'm going, uh, the technician is going to create uh, the prosthesis, uh, um, temporary or uh, uh, final prosthesis. Uh, it's, uh, we can get both of them. A bit of history, because uh, um, guided uh, technique uh, has got a father and uh, it's almost uh, 18 year, year, years old. Um, the father of this technique is Daniel Vanstenberg, that in 2002, working with uh, a very famous uh, um, company uh, on his uh, idea, um, he uh, published a clinical um, report case uh, where he was able to fix uh, in six patients over eight implant a definitive prosthesis. Yes, uh, I'm not joking, it's a definitive prosthesis. And what he said about this technique is that this procedure permitted that the placement of a definitive fixed prosthesis with limited freedom of space between the abutment and the metal cylinders incorporated into the prosthesis. Uh, and uh, this uh, affirmation sounds, uh, sounded like a bomb for the surgical uh, uh, world because uh, uh, think about the fact that uh, in just one section you are able uh, to place, uh, to perform the surgery and uh, fix the uh, final, the definitive fixed prosthesis. All the work is done in just one day. Uh, but uh, if we read 
better uh, the affirmation, we know also that we need a limited freedom of space between the abutment and the cylinders that are incorporated into the prosthesis. This li um, limited freedom uh, of space, uh, what is it? Well, actually, uh, we can call it uh, as uh, tolerance, a tolerance between abat the abutment and the metal cylinder cylinders uh, into the prosthesis. But the tolerance, what is it? The tolerance is actually uh, it's an um, inaccuracy. We can call it inaccuracy. Yes, because in uh, guided uh, technique, uh, this uh, word is really, really important. What do I mean when I say accuracy? Accuracy is uh, actually uh, the maximum deviation between the virtual imaging of the uh, implant when it's compared with the real uh, position of the, uh, the, the, the implant. And as you can see from this image, this is actually one of my first uh, <clears throat> case that uh, I have done with uh, uh, the um, guided technique and is actually fixed uh, over teeth uh, so it's uh, um, a teeth supported guide uh, uh, template well actually as you can see from this image uh, the last picture is uh, the um, comparison uh, between the virtual image and the real image. And as you can see from uh, each implant, uh, this uh, uh, matching uh, fit perfectly. I mean, what uh, is uh, the uh, position in the virtual uh, world, it's the same in the real uh, world. So uh, we can say that uh, in this case, uh, I, uh, I reached a very high, high accuracy, okay? But uh, uh, why do uh, we have this uh, uh, freedom space, uh, this uh, tolerance, uh, this uh, inaccuracy? Because if I have to be honest with you, uh, no, it doesn't exist, um, the precision or the 100% uh, perfection in this system. We can reach, we can uh, work close uh, to this uh, uh, percentual, we can say, uh, but uh, it's never 100%. Why? Because the guided surgery technique requires a workflow. And this workflow uh, is uh, made of nine operative steps. And in these operative, nine operative steps, uh, we, can, uh, bring inside, uh, we can bring inside this, the system errors. And um, error in uh, guided surgery technique are cumulative. What does it mean? It means that error over error, we are going to get a big final error that can fail our uh, uh, technique, our, uh, our, um, our rehabilitation. I mean, and uh, uh, it's really important to talk about uh, uh, all uh, um, the possibility to enter in this uh, um, system, this error, to avoid them. Be yes, because error can be entered during the data capturing, error can be entered during the implant planning, error can be entered during the guide manufacturing, and error can be entered also during the surgery. Okay, uh, just to have uh, to refresh, uh, to have an idea of what we are talking um, about uh, uh, this uh, system. Uh, the guide surgery technique has got a workflow, and the first workflow was uh, made by Daniel Banstenberg, uh, starting by um, using um, uh, two files coming from a double CT um, scannerization. The first file, it's uh, the patient wearing uh, the radiological template. It's a DICOM file. The second file, it's uh, the DICOM file of the radiological radiopack template. And these two files that I have, have to be uh, matched together. Once that the matching is done, um, um, a software uh, can be read this matching and uh, working on this software, the doctor is going to be able to uh, decide the position of the implant uh, guided by uh, the information that it gets from uh, the um, radiological template. 
once that uh, the implant positioning have been done uh, we uh, can uh, send the information to our technician and our technician is going to um, design virtually with the CAD uh, the virtual imaging of the uh, radiolog surgical template finally with a 3D printer is going to print the real surgical template and the prosthesis does this workflow works? Yes, it works for every case. But the problem is the fact that the double CT combined scan technique, the one that uh, it's the original one, uh, it doesn't really uh, work in a good way or with an high accuracy in case of uh, uh, the presence of metal in the mouth of the patient. Yes, because of metal that we can uh, uh, find in um, a prosthetic uh, uh, part uh, or uh, um, in the uh, removable or uh, the metal part of a removable prosthesis. Also, also uh, the removable uh, the the resin that we use to rebase the removable prosthesis can contain can contain in the liquid part uh, metal. Well, actually, all this metal in the mouth of the patient can create a different formation during the, 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 the CT combine exam and, the def, uh, and a deformation um, can uh, create um, a problem of uh, precision, uh, it brings a problem of precision. So uh, during this year uh, it has been uh, um, presented uh, a, an alternative workflow. This alternative workflow doesn't do, do not require a double CT convene, but it requires just one CT convene of the patient wearing the radiological template and uh, the plaster model. With the plaster model, uh, and the plaster model is going to be uh, sc uh, scannerized by an extraoral scanner. With uh, the extraoral scanner, I'm going to get uh, an STL file that you can see from uh, uh, the image. This, uh, this uh, scannerization, extraoral scannerization, allowed me to have the information about soft tissues, um, surgical. Uh, uh, rad radiological template and teeth. Once that I've got all this information, I can match uh, the STL file with uh, the DICOM file coming from uh, the CT combine. And this is uh, uh, the final imaging, the bone coming from the CT combine and the soft tissue teeth, teeth uh, while the soft tissues teeth and radiological te template comes from uh, the scannerization with uh, the extra oral scanner. This is really important because it's uh, the only difference uh, between the two uh, workflow. The, start the beginning because then it's always the same a with a surgical software i'm going to planning uh, virtually the implant insertion with uh, a modeling software i'm going to uh, the technician is going to design the virtual uh, uh, design of uh, uh, the um, um, surgical uh, uh, template and uh, with a 3D printer um, the technician is going to print the real surgical template and with a milling machine the prosthetic uh, rehabilitation. Actually this uh, alternative workflow that uh, use uh, uh, the um, um, extra oral scanner uh, it has been studied by Mario Beretta and uh, Mario Beretta has, um, has um, uh, checked the accuracy of the double CT convene exam, the original, we can say, uh, the traditional technique, uh, with this new uh, method, alternative method that, that used the extra oral scanner. And the results are really interesting because uh, in uh, angular deviation and global deviation we notice uh, better accuracy and higher accuracy and, uh, and I, um, uh, as you can see from this uh, um, imagine the double CT con bin has got uh, a coronal deviation an apical deviation uh, higher than uh, the alternative method and the angular deviation as well so it seems uh, uh, that uh, the alternative uh, method works, works better than the original one. 
Do we have another method? Yes, we actually have a third workflow, a third alternative workflow. And this is, uh, it does, and this workflow do not use uh, the extraoral scanner, but it uses the intraoral scanner. And this is uh, better because uh, with the intraoral scanner, I don't need to use any uh, surgical radiological template. This is really important. Uh, with this uh, workflow, I am not using any uh, radiological template. Yes, because I just have to take uh, the virtual impression by using uh, the intraoral uh, scanner. This uh, um, virtual imaging is going to be uh, matched with uh, the DICOM file coming from uh, the um, scannerization made with the extra oral scanner. This is the imaging that uh, we are going uh, uh, to have, final imaging, and uh, uh, the, the rest is always the same. I mean, uh, surgical software to place the implant uh, position, modeling software uh, uh, to create, uh, to design the virtual uh, um, uh, surgery software, uh, so surgery uh, template, the 3D printer uh, to print uh, the um, um, surgical template, and finally uh, the um, milling machine to get the prosthesis. And as you can see from this imagine, uh, this uh, uh, technique is allowed, but just in case of uh, uh, short uh, um, dental uh, prosthetic rehabilitation, like two teeth, or a single tooth rehabilitation. And we are going, and I'm going to show you later uh, why. So remember these uh, important things. You can work with the intraoral uh, uh, scanner, but just for single tooth rehabilitation and uh, short uh, dental uh, rehabilitation. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, which case can I use, uh, can I uh, handle with uh, this uh, technique? Well, actually, I can uh, handle every case. I mean, I can work uh, uh, with uh, full arch rehabilitation, partial arch rehabilitation, single tooth uh, rehabilitation. And uh, the workflow, the operative workflow is always uh, the same. This is the only thing that change. Uh, I need one um, file come coming from the city combine and uh, giving me the idea, the virtual idea of the bone of the patient. The second file, it can comes from uh, the CT combine, an extra oral uh, scanner or an intra oral scanner. Once that I got uh, these two files, I can match uh, them together and with a software I'm going to read, uh, I'm going uh, to decide the position of the implants and uh, with the CAD system, the technician is going to design virtually uh, the surgical template and um, uh, with uh, a 3D printer is going to uh, create uh, what? Uh, the real uh, template uh, that I'm going to use uh, for the surgery, as you can see from this image. And this is uh, the final uh, uh, results. Check in uh, with the CT combine. You can see that uh, the implant are placed bone level. These are case that are the first case that I have uh, made with uh, this uh, uh, technique. Uh, they are all bone level, perfectly centrated in the into the bone. So, uh, which case can I handle with uh, the original technique? Every case. I mean, I can uh, work uh, with a full arch uh, the full arch rehabilitation. I can uh, handle partial arch rehabilitation or single uh, uh, tooth rehabilitation. But remember, this is really important. If you have metal in the mouth of the patient, and remember that the metal can be also in the um, um, uh, resin that you use to rebase uh, the removable prosthesis. So be very careful, check uh, the liquid part, especially, is, uh, can, can have uh, metal. Yes, because metal, as I told you before, can create a deformation. So the original method, the double CT combine, uh, allowed me to handle every situation, but uh, when in the mouth of the patient, uh, there is no metal. 
In case of metal, I recommended you uh, to use the second method, uh, the, second, the second workflow. The second workflow uh, requires uh, um, a CT combine imaging of the patient wearing the radiological template and the STL file uh, of the plaster model and uh, the um, radiological template. Finally, uh, the intraoral scanner, well actually intraoral scanner allowed me to uh, perform, to handle only the single tooth rehabilitation or short uh, dental uh, rehabilitation. Let's move on and uh, let's start talking about uh, the errors that can be entered into the workflow, into the system during the data capturing. Uh, the data, as you can see from this image, uh, the capturing of the file comes uh, from, uh, again, the CT combine or the extraoral scanner or the intraoral scanner. And these are the images that uh, we uh, will uh, get. Uh, we are going to get uh, uh, the soft tissues, the bone and the radiological templates, uh, teeth. Uh, but uh, uh, what about the error? The errors. Uh, the first errors comes uh, uh, that comes uh, with uh, the CT combine. It's uh, the movement of the patient. Yes, because during the exam, the exam, if the patient moves his mouth, um, we can have a problem of uh, uh, the um, final imaging of these exams, and it go, it's go, it, it going to be f to to fail. And uh, if the imagine, the final imagine uh, is not clear, uh, we cannot, uh, uh, the technician cannot work on uh, um, file uh, that um, uh, it's corrupted. Uh, metal artifact, uh, metal, as I told you before, uh, the presence of metal in the mouth of uh, the patients can create a deformation of the imagine. And uh, this deformation is better known as um, uh, uh, scattering effect. And again, uh, remember that the metal is not only the single crown, uh, the metal part of the single crown or a bridge. Uh, the metal uh, is also in the liquid of the, um, the, the resin that you use to rebase the removal prosthesis of the patient. So, um, full arch rehabilitation doesn't mean that does not have any metal. And um, the um, deformation, uh, it's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite big, it's uh, a big part of uh, um, error that, uh, it's a big part that brings into the system uh, a very important error. CT parameters, remember that uh, the CT combine is uh, a machinery. So every year, uh, once a year at least, it has to be uh, set by a um, technician, a professional pe uh, person uh, that uh, is going to check the parameters. Yes, because um, in literature uh, are uh, reported cases where the range of error for the CT combine goes from 0 to 0 0.4 millimeter. You can understand that 0 0.4 millimeter, it's a very big error to enter into the uh, system. What about the extraoral and the intraoral scanner? Well, uh, checking the literature, um, Sazon uh, made a comparative uh, study between the intraoral and, intra and extraoral scanners. And uh, what we know about these studies is that the intraoral scanner seems to be uh, more precise and trueness uh, compared to the extraoral scanner, especially uh, the range uh, of precision. Uh, but uh, this range is not so um, uh, different as you can see from uh, um, uh, this, um, uh, this, um, uh, this affirmation. Uh, but uh, uh, what uh, we can find out from the literature is the fact uh, that, uh, yes, the digital intraoral impression works uh, in this uh, range of precision in case of single crown or short fixed dental uh, prosthesis.
In case of uh, uh, full arch impression or uh, um, long fixed dental prosthesis, um, all the author agree to the fact that uh, it's better to use the conventional impression technique. And uh, really interesting is uh, this article, uh, this lecture of um, Ender, uh, where he tested the two types of uh, uh, impression, the virtual impression with the analog we can say, uh, well, it's not analogic, I mean using material like elastomeric material uh, or hydrocolloid material. Um, and what it comes out from this, uh, um, this, uh, this lecture, uh, this uh, article, uh, it comes out that uh, the most precise uh, technique is using the double impression with elastomeric material. Yes, the double impression you heard really well, the double impression, uh, it's more precise, it's more precise compared to the, uh, the um, intraoral uh, scanner. Uh, the worst uh, material that you can uh, work with, uh, it's actually the alginate. So the traditional technique, it seems to be uh, more precise than uh, the virtual um, technique. Implant planning. During the implant planning, I can enter error. Uh, and uh, let's see this error. Yes, error of valutation. Yes, because not all the patient can be treated with this uh, technique. I mean, um, for example, patient with uh, um, 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 uh, temporomandibular, temporomandibular joint uh, disorder, um, obviously they cannot work with this technique because uh, the patient have to keep his mouth um, open for a long time and you have to work with uh, um, a surgical template uh, with a very long drill with uh, uh, the one piece in the mouth of the patient. So at least remember uh, it's required a um, minimum open uh, a minimum um, opening mouth of three centimeter. Um, and then remember that not all the case can be treated uh, with this technique, especially uh, when a patient come to my uh, clinic uh, with a removable prosthesis, we think that uh, I, I, I rather work uh, always uh, with uh, uh, this technique, but not always I can, especially in this case, uh, in that case where uh, uh, the removable prosthesis of the patient uh, slide uh, laterally uh, because of the fact that there is uh, just basal bone and not alveolar bone. Well, in that case, I already know in advance that uh, I'm not going to be able to find uh, a good position for the uh, radiological template and remember that the same position is uh, required for the surgical template. So if uh, I cannot uh, have or find a good uh, um, position of the um, uh, radiological template, how can be possible to find the same position for the radiological template. This is really, really important. And uh, the problem is not only when uh, I have a big resorption of uh, the alveolar bone, but is also when I've got uh, uh, too much soft tissues. Yes. Uh, because uh, when I've got uh, hyperplasia or when I've got uh, that floating crest uh, that you touch uh, and uh, you can move uh, back uh, uh, up and up and down, um, well, actually, um, in that case, uh, um, the ductility of the tissues is uh, too high and uh, this is going to be a problem because uh, I cannot find uh, the right position of the radiological template and surgical template. So, in case of a very thick uh, mucus, remember, um, try to um, um, to um, uh, cut, to eliminate uh, this uh, thickness, uh, and then you can work with, uh, uh, reduce this thickness, and then you can work with uh, this technique, uh, the guided technique.
Uh, during uh, the let's go with uh, the planning time, uh, the implant planning. Uh, remember that uh, a minimum space uh, uh, of six millimeter is required for the uh, sleeves. So if you don't have a six millimeter between two teeth, it's impossible to work with uh, the guided technique. Also, uh, if when you planned, uh, but uh, we are uh, very lucky because uh, the technician, if he's a good technician, he can uh, um, adju ad adjust this uh, uh, problem. Uh, when I'm plan when I'm planning, sometimes I I I'm, I forget to check for the uh, sleeves, and um, the sleeves has a distance from the head of the implant of four millimeter. Okay, it's uh, um, um, an, um, uh, this four millimeter uh, doesn't doesn't change. Okay, are always the same. This made the guide. Uh, technique um, predictable. Well, um, when I work, maybe sometimes I want to place the implant one or two millimeter under the level of the bone because I prefer to uh, use shorter implant, but uh, always one or two millimeter under the level of the bone. And sometimes the sleeves, uh, as you can see from this image, can enter into the soft tissues, or maybe I put uh, I, I choose an inclination of the implant that brings the sleeves into the soft tissues or close to one teeth or uh, close to a papilla. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, in that case, uh, most of the time I have to open, I'm supposed to open a flap, even if I want to uh, work flapless. Well, actually, um, some um, we uh, from BAB Dental have developed uh, uh, this uh, um, um, this um, trick that you can play to avoid to uh, open any flap and work flapless. Uh, just uh, moving up uh, the sleeves of two or four uh, millimeters, and uh, the kit has got all. Uh, the uh, tools uh, to allow me to place uh, uh, the implant in the right position even if the uh, sleeves has been uh, moved of two or three or, or four millimeter but I'm going to explain you uh, better it's just a trick to avoid uh, the um, uh, the fact that uh, the sleeves uh, is into the soft tissues uh, other problem is when uh, I don't check uh, the position, the right position of the radiological template. I mean, uh, like you can see uh, from the first image, it's uh, a maxilla and uh, the radiological uh, template uh, detach from the soft tissues. Yes, because you can see that there is a black spot. Uh, this black spot, uh, it's uh, um, because there is air, the radiological template detach from the soft tissues uh, and uh, this is a problem because it's not in the right position as is not in the right position uh, the second image where you can see uh, the um, uh, the um, soft tissue, the, the, uh, the um, um, uh, prosthesis, the radiological template that slide uh, behind uh, the, um, uh, the position and uh, this happen uh, frequent, uh, a lot of time frequently, uh, especially when uh, um, there is uh, no alveolar bone and just basal bone and uh, there is no bone to uh, make uh, to um, um, search for a good fitting of the uh, radiological template over uh, the um, um, mandible. This is uh, an item that BAB Dental has introduced uh, to reduce uh, this uh, problem. And uh, yes, because uh, some brands use Guttaperk as a radio pack marker. Some other use some sort of uh, Lego toy um, fix over an, uh, an arch. Well, actually what we uh, use are these uh, radio pack marker, very small, little, rounded, uh, they are very easy to uh, you, to be used because you have just to touch to um, attack this uh, um, uh, marker over the radiological template. Five of them, and uh, 
uh, it's done. The work is uh, done. Another um, item different from the other uh, um, brands is the fact that uh, we support uh, the fact to use uh, uh, the pick sleeves. Uh, yes, uh, because uh, we started working with the metal sleeves, but uh, metal sleeves uh, um, um, can affect uh, can affect the optimal implant uh, position. I mean, uh, when a metal the drill um, rotate inside these sleeves, it can be uh, possible uh, to create an effect that is better known as friction effect. And uh, this friction effect uh, um, create uh, um, a problem of uh, uh, working of the drill, rotation of the drill inside these uh, uh, metal sleeves. Uh, so to uh, avoid this uh, uh, problem, we uh, decided to work with uh, the pick sleeves. Pick sleeves are amazing. It's an amazing material, and uh, they uh, don't have uh, uh, a big, uh, uh, so high uh, um, friction working with the drill inside the pick sleeves, and uh, this allowed me to have uh, a final sleeves smaller uh, and so much more precise than the metal uh, sleeves. Yes, because the metal sleeves have to be have to be kept uh, bigger uh, to avoid the problem of the friction. The friction. Also, uh, this material it's uh, an amazing material because uh, it has less overheat and uh, it doesn't burn the soft tissues uh, that touch uh, the um, sleeves. Let's move on with uh, the guide uh, uh, manufacturing um, errors. And uh, if we check from the literature, uh, we will uh, see, we can find out uh, that some author has studied, uh, like Sommacal did, uh, has studied the um, 3D printer uh, machineries. Yes, because in uh, we can have different uh, type of 3D printer machinery. This is really, really important. Yes, because if we want to have a precise um, surgical template, remember that uh, the 3D printer is uh, really important. I mean, uh, it has been shown that uh, uh, 3D printer that create a layers lower than 20 micron uh, are able to create a much more precise um, surgical template than um, uh, 3D printer machine uh, that create um, um, surgical template with layers of, of 50 um, micron. So remember, uh, um, thinner is uh, the, um, uh, the, um, uh, the um, uh, thinner is the layer uh, that the 3D printer uh, um, is going to create and uh, higher will be the accuracy of uh, the, the precision of the um, surgical template. Richard, uh, other author, has studied the sleeves um, and uh, the error that comes from the sleeves and in his article we uh, what we can find out. We can find out that um, the deviation increase in case of uh, long implant lens and large drill K diameter. This is a, uh, um, really, this is true. Uh, longer is the implant and higher will be, is the possibility uh, to have um, a deviation uh, of the final position. And uh, larger is the drill, so more operative uh, steps, more drill I'm going to use, and higher will be the possibility to change the position of the, the implant. And uh, this is also related to the fact that uh, uh, shorter sleeves or, or um, drill K heights can conditionate uh, this, uh, um, uh, this uh, um, uh, situation. Um, this is, uh, and this is uh, really, really, um, really, really important. 
never change uh, the sleeves. Uh, sleeves uh, have been studied uh, to uh, have uh, a dimension, uh, a height, a width uh, that can guide uh, properly the drill and the implant uh, positioning. Um, Shen uh, is uh, the author that uh, has studied the sterilization. Does the sterilization can create a deformation of the radiological uh, the surgical template? Yes, it does, especially the heat sterilization. If you want to sterilize your um, uh, radio uh, surgical template, uh, it's uh, um, important that you use uh, or the plasma gas uh, um, sterilization or alcohol, at least 70%. Finally, we got uh, another technique. I reported another technique uh, to make uh, the um, surgical template. And this technique uh, I can call the analogic technique. It uses a milling machine to transform what? Uh, the um, um, uh, radiological um, radiopack template in a surgical radiopack template. The same template that I use for the um, ra radi radiological exam I am going to use for the surgery and uh, it's a milling machine that uh, drill uh, the hole with the right inclination but uh, the system brings too much error into um, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, um, the system so um, it's more, if I have to be honest, uh, it's uh, more accurate working with uh, uh, the digital technique than the analogic technique. Let's see the last um, part of the error uh, that we can bring into this system and uh, they come during the surgery. I uh, made a um, research uh, in the literature and uh, uh, you can find more than 300 articles uh, from uh, in these uh, uh, 13 years and um, what I was looking for was uh, uh, article with a similar operative procedure in vivo studies teeth and mucus uh, supported guide and all the studies that uh, um, bring information about the angular deviation and the global deviation and at least what I can find out is uh, what I could find out is the fact that uh, uh, the all the authors uh, agree with uh, the fact that uh, with the idea that tooth supported guide has a smaller deviation compared with the mucosa supported guide and bone supported guide. As you can see from the table, uh, the score of the table, the angular deviation of the su tooth supported guide is lower compared to uh, the angular deviation of the mucosa supported guide. Uh, why? Uh, because of the teeth. Teeth are the best pillar, the best, best fixation system that you can work with this system. Let's see uh, other items. Uh, find, fa finding out uh, with uh, uh, from the literature uh, bone density type of bone mucosal thickness surgical experience smoking habits implants lens and fixation screw let's start with the bone density what about the bone density um, Oki in his article um, he um, noticed that higher is the density of the bone and uh, more difficult is to reach the right position of the implant yes because in his uh, um, opinion uh, when the bone has a very high density it's uh, uh, very difficult to reach uh, the position uh, uh, le bone level um, the implant stay over the level of the stayed over the level of the bone so uh, in his opinion lower is uh, the density of the bone and uh, higher is uh, the accuracy uh, but about this item uh, there is a little bit of, confu of confusion in um, the literature yes because if you uh, check for the type of bone we can see the odd, that Othan, Ozan said that uh, uh, a better accuracy comes in the mandible this is 
totally the opposite worth the author before said. Uh, yes, because for Odan, um, the great accuracy is indemandable because of the high density of the bone. What about uh, Patterson and Cassetta said about uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the type of bone? Well, uh, they said that uh, they um, um, they said that uh, um, the a better accuracy in in the maxilla because of the low uh, density of the bone and the large area to stabilize the surgical template. You can understand that uh, every author has an idea different from the uh, other. Uh, what can I say to you? In my opinion, is that. Uh, uh, it's true, bone density can be a problem, but uh, um, honestly, if you um, uh, know your system, uh, you um, can prepare uh, the implant site in the right uh, way to reach uh, the level that you have already chosen during uh, the software, the virtual software uh, uh, planning. So, uh, for example, for the Evidental, if I use, uh, if I work in a bone level D1 or D2, very high uh, density, well, in that case, uh, and I want to uh, place uh, a 3P or an evolution implant, I'm going to use the same uh, drill uh, of the same diameter of the implant, and, and sometimes, especially in bone D1, I'm going also uh, to use the counter seal drill. Okay, uh, so you have to know um, your system, you, the system you are working with, uh, to um, reach uh, the right position of the implant. What is it? Uh, what, what can I say to you? It's that I can agree with Pat uh, Patterson and Cassetta about the fact that uh, the higher, an higher accuracy is in the maxilla. Uh, because not because of uh, the low density of the bone, but because uh, of the large area that uh, we have to stabilize the surgical uh, template. Uh, this is really, really important. Also, the maxilla has got uh, anatomical um, area uh, that I can check for the stabilization of the surgical template and radiological template, like uh, uh, the, um, uh, the frenulum or uh, uh, the tuberosity of the maxilla. Uh, these are point, uh, uh, checkpoint really, really important. What about the mucosal thickness? The mucosal, about the mucosal thickness, we know that it can affect the final implant position. Hawking and Cassetta, they notice that thicker is the mucus and higher is the global deviation, so lower is the accuracy. Why? Because of the utility. We have spoken before this uh, problem. Yes, when the thick, it's uh, uh, when a mucus is really thick, uh, these uh, tissues can have an eye utility. Um, and when I work with the guided system technique, uh, it's required to uh, work with a um, system that is static. I mean, the impression has to be mucostatic. Uh, the um, um, positioning of uh, the surgical template has to be mucostatic. Uh, the positioning of the radiological template have to be mucostatic. This is really, really important. And you can understand that thicker is the mucus, uh, lower will be, will be the stability of the templates. And uh, these authors uh, notice also that uh, smoker have a uh, um, thicker mucus compared with a, patch, with a patient that uh, um, do not smoke. What about the implant lens? The implant lens can affect the optimal positioning of the um, implants. Uh, and um, Dassen, in his article, he noticed that uh, uh, implants, short implants, like uh, uh, as you can see from this uh, uh, table, uh, in, 8 millimeter implant have an apical deviation lower than implant longer, like uh, implant of 15 uh, millimeter. 
Uh, and uh, this uh, is uh, true and the problem is uh, what we better know as uh, flag effect. What is it, the flag effect? The flag effect is an effect that uh, brings uh, a sort of deviation of the apical part of the, uh, the, um, the drill and the implant. Why? Because uh, of the, the fact that uh, when I place, uh, one, when, I, when I prepare uh, with the drill uh, the bone and I place uh, the implant, it can happen that uh, looking for the bicorticalism, because it's very easy to work with, uh, looking for the bicorticalism working with a guided technique. Um, well, uh, the apical part can floating, uh, the apical part of the implant can floating, as you can see from the is a imagine in the trabecular bone and hitting against the inner face of the cortical part, it can be deviated a little bit. And uh, uh, so remember, longer is the implant uh, and the higher will be the possibility to have a deviation of the apical uh, part. What about the fixation screw? The, fix the fixation screw uh, uses uh, lateral uh, pin for most of the um, uh, other brands. But uh, for me are not enough. Yes, because uh, um, lateral pin can uh, uh, sit in uh, the right position, the anterior part of the surgical template, but uh, uh, the posterior part can laid up, can be laid up. So uh, for this uh, reason, we introduce in our system uh, the BB Dental introduce the crystal screw and mixing the lateral pin with uh, the crystal screw is the best way to work and uh, all the author that we have seen uh, uh, before agree with the fact that uh, it's important to work with the lateral pin this, Im this is an imagine of uh, the that show you the fact that the posterior that the posterior part of the um, surgical template can lay down uh, from uh, the position, even if you use uh, the lateral pin, and uh, uh, in the second, uh, in the second uh, on the on the right, you uh, can see the fixation of the posterior area by using the crystal uh, pin. They are very uh, useful and. Um, uh, for me, it's uh, the best way to work: uh, uh, crystal screw and uh, lateral uh, pin. Okay, uh, let's uh, move on. And uh, at least uh, we got also the mounter that can uh, um, work as a, a fixation screw. Uh, the mounter um, allowed me to place the implant in the right position, checking also for the right position of the hexagonal interface of the implant. Important, really important, especially when I choose to work with angulated abutment. What about the surgical experience? Well, uh, about the surgical experience, uh, we can... Uh uh, this, this article is really int interesting because uh, uh, Van der Wiel um, made an um, ask for uh, two groups, one of expert doctor and another one uh, dentist without any experience in uh, guided technique. And uh, what we can find out that uh, the expert group uh, from the table, uh, table uh, you can see the expert group, uh, group uh, goes well, better than uh, the not expert group. I mean, uh, the implant placed by the expert group has a lower uh, global deviation and angular deviation. But uh, if you look at the angular deviation of not expert uh, group, you can uh, uh, understand that uh, this uh, difference is not so high. So this is really important, 2.78 for the not expert group and 2.7 um, for the expert group. This is really, really important because what these, uh, um, these uh, score, uh, these results say to us is that uh, this technique is predictable. Everyone can work with uh, the guided technique getting uh, the same results. What about uh, now uh, the accuracy? Uh, uh, if we compare the guided surgery technique with the freehand surgery technique. Uh, 
Well, uh, these two articles are really interesting because uh, they ask the same doctor to place implant, the same implant, with uh, guided by a template and free hand. And what we find out? We find out that uh, the guided surgery technique has an high accuracy uh, um, compared uh, to the with uh, the free hand uh, surgery. Yes, because when you um, place an implant free hand, the accuracy is higher than two millimeter. It means that uh, the deviation between the virtual implant and the real implant is bigger, is uh, higher than two millimeter. Uh, Instead, with the guided surgery technique, we can work flapless, so minor bone crystal loose, loss and less pain post-operatory. Uh, but uh, what about the prosthetic uh, results? The prosthetic results are the same. It works uh, uh, good uh, in a good way working with freehand surgery and guided surgery technique. Uh, my dear doctor, uh, this is actually my presentation. I hope uh, to um, clear, have, uh, um, um, show you uh, the right way to work with this uh, technique uh, that um, I read work uh, in every case, but uh, again, remember, not all the cases can be uh, done. Uh, hope uh, this uh, uh, this. Um, um, suggestion that I gave to you uh, will help you uh, to reach uh, great things and great accuracy also in your daily work. So, um, bye.